So I figured out the issue that was causing the laser to come on when I powered on the louse board, and that was that um, I'm using the opto isolated laser power supply here, right? That goes through this opto coupler with these um, current limiting resistors. Well, I had also had the laser on jumper set for this transistor. So what happens is on the schematic, uh, five volts goes on to the positive side of the LED in the optocoupler through the current, li current limiting resistor to the laser on pin on the embed. Now what happens when I have this jumper set to laser on is it um, puts that same pin, the laser on pin on the embed, onto the base of this transistor. So what happens then is that current is then flowing through the base of the transistor through the, the bias resistor to ground. So while the embed is in high impedance, that provides enough current through the optocoupler LED that it turns the laser on. So it's very important that you not have the jumper set to laser on on the transistor if you're going to use the optocoupler. And I also think, um, I'll find out here in a minute, but I also think that's what's causing um, this variation in power and not very strong power is that the base current on that transistor is robbing some of the the source current or the sink current from the embed that would be turning the um, laser on. So um, I, I also went ahead and I dealt with the extraction system. So I have a, I made a plywood board, an insert that goes into the window that has a um, just regular Home Depot dryer vent and um, this aluminized dryer vent tube just slides over it there. My daughter wanted to get involved in the project so she colored it for me. Um, anyways, I hope that this prevents some of the nastier fumes from clogging up the room I've been doing this in. I've been um, having the exhaust go into the room for a while, sort of pointed at the window, but that's been in insufficient. Okay, so the control board is powered on. The water current is running. I'm going to turn the laser on. Okay, there we go. Test works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for broke and I'm going to try to etch a Hackaday stamp. So um, I've got stamp blank that came with the laser cutter that's about 40 millimeters aside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box like that one that is aligned with where it's going to etch and then I'm going to drop the plastic down, the rubber, into the box and then I'm going to try to etch the skull and wrenches onto it. So the way I've got it set up in Inkscape is I found somebody's uh, SVG file for the skull and wrenches and then I added a separate rectangle that is exactly aligned with it on a separate layer. So you can see I can turn that on and off. And it's also a separate color. So I can go into um, so I can go into extensions, do laser cut path, open and VisiCut, and then it will prepare it and load VisiCut for me. All right. So there's the um, there's the drawing. I'm going to move it kind of away from that edge, and then I'm going to go and do a mapping by group or layer. Well, that's not very good. Maybe I'll try mapping by color. So that's a little better. I've got three colors, 
and I know I only want to etch the red one. So I'm going to say ignore, 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 and I want this one to be mark, not engrave, and ignore. Okay, so hopefully that has the effect of just drawing a line in that rectangle. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, that's pretty decent, although I have to say the extraction system is not working at all. One thing I neglected to think about with the extraction was that it's got these louvers that flap down. Well, normally they don't have a screen in front of them, so they weren't able to flap open. So that's why the extraction wasn't working. So I went ahead and pulled them out, and I'm gonna put the extraction system back on and we'll try to engrave out. I went ahead and went back to Inkscape, deleted the border, brought it back into VisiCut, and I tried to match the distances to the, to the origin. Um, I'm just gonna leave it engrave everything and try to execute it. Okay. Well, it's not exactly right on track. I'm still getting a little bit of the smell. So I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But the extraction is working. It's not as efficient as I'd like. You can see some of it going off into the corner. Awesome. I think I'm going to run that a couple more times to make sure that it's deep enough to actually be a stamp. But so far, that was just awesome. Well, I'm going to have to do a lot more practice to um, figure out power settings and speeds and all that other fun stuff, but I have to say that I've worked through the despair of Moshi and I've certainly become a Laos laser convert. So let me just say that if you buy a Chinese laser cutter, expect that if you get a Moshi board, you'll probably want to replace it. And the Laos project is really excellent. There's good help online and it really does the trick.
So I think that's this is going to be the end of um, the laser cutter series. I will probably still post videos about lasering stuff um, in general. There's a couple of things I need to fix. I need to get the uh, lab power supply out of the mix. I've got a power supply I liberated from a printer. I'm going to see if I can get that one to work and put it inside so it's all self-contained. And I'm thinking about mounting, taking the circuit board out of the Linksys and seeing if I can wedge it in here somewhere, maybe put it up against this wall or something. So this is just a self-contained Wi-Fi laser cutter. But for now, I'm really satisfied and I'm really excited to get stuff cutting. Uh, thanks for watching the series. Um, I've got a lot more ideas coming up. So uh, make sure you still subscribe and, and like videos. That really helps me a lot.